Back in the day, the good old sedan was the go-to family car. But things are a little bit different these days. Car buyers want a little more space, a little more ground clearance, and of course, a third row is a bonus. Which is why today we've gathered four of the country's most popular high-riding subcompact MPVs. And today's high-riding MPVs are represented by the brands Honda, Hyundai, Mitsubishi, and of course, Toyota. And among them, which will come out on top? And that's what we're here to find out in this edition of... Big Test! Oh, even oh. shorter! Why do you always keep loading the small <laughs> But before we begin, we'd like to give a quick shout out to Metro Pacific Tollways for letting us shoot at the soon to open Silang Aguinaldo Interchange of Calax. So we'll kick things off alphabetically with the Honda BRV. It's one of the newest ones in the group and it's the second generation of Honda's popular model. But does newest mean bestest? What's a fight without an underdog? Up next is the Hyundai Stargazer. Now, this is the first Hyundai in recent memory to dip its toes into the subcompact MPV segment. Does the underdog stand a chance? Let's find out. Meanwhile, I have the senior citizen of this group test, the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Now, yes, it was recently facelifted, but you have to remember that the original Expander first came out in August of 2017 in international markets. But here's the thing. Does this old dog still have a couple of tricks up its sleeve? And maybe it'll have other features that the other cars don't. Of course, this mega test wouldn't be complete without the Toyota. And in this case, we've chosen the Velos, since Toyota actually markets this as a crossover. And it only makes sense we brought it in a group of other crossover MPVs. Time to find out how this fares against its main competitors. You're going to be taking these things out on road trips, and you're going to be driving on the highway or going up and down winding roads. So the engine performance and the torque and the transmission should all work together to see how each of these carry themselves through more challenging terrain or more situations. And to make the acceleration tests more interesting, we're gonna load these up and we're also gonna do it on a slight incline. Let's put it into drive, no sport mode or anything, just basically how normal people would drive, although I'm not sure normal people will ever launch a BRV, but three, two, one. 30, 40, 50, and 60. Thirty, forty, fifty, and sixty. All right, on to the next car, the Hyundai Stargazer, and this is actually the second most powerful in its class. So about five horsepower less compared to the Honda. But um, what do you guys think? I feel that it looks the most unique of all these cars. But we'll see if that spaceship look means that we go spaceship speeds or not. Yeah. Three, two, one, and... And 60. That felt it, it was a bit more sprightly off the line, Because huh? it was yeah. quicker. And Tony even said it a bit later. When he said 16, it was at 60 something now. Yeah. Three, two, one, and. And 60. Okay, it's the Veloz's turn, and uh, some stats it's got a little over 100 horsepower. So it's a little bit behind both the Honda and the Hyundai. Okay, so on to drive, no fancy stuff, and and let's go. This is floored, by the way, guys. Oh. <laughs> I'm floored. I'm floored. There we go. <laughs> Took a while. And let's go. This is floored, by the way, guys. Oh. <laughs> I'm floored. I'm floored. There we go. Took a while. All right, last but not the least, Expander Cross, and uh, this is the oldest car here. And it feels it. 
This is the one with the four speed. Yes. All right, so just in drive, obviously no sport mode. I can't put it in second gear or in low. Uh, that's something kids haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> All right, let's go. This is floored and... Oh, this is floored, you guys. What? Okay. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so it lags at the low end, but then once it hits about 35, yeah. 40, then it picks up. This is floored and... Oh, this is floored, you guys. What? Okay. Okay, now, there we go. Braking power is probably even more important than horsepower, especially if you're carrying precious cargo around, like your loved ones, for example. The brakes in these MPV crossovers could determine the differences between a fender bender and a close call. So it's nice to see which of these stops the best. Literally all of them have drum brakes except for the Toyota. So uh, let's see how this goes. Uh, let's hit 60 Ks. We don't have to mash the throttle anymore. We just hit 60. Okay, maybe I have to a little bit. So we're at 60 Ks. Maintain 60, maintain 60, and everyone hang on. You guys good there? That yeah. was, that was, that was better than I thought. Yeah, that was impressive, <laughs> man. I, I Ow. Ow. Ouch, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I know your complaint there about the headrest, but we'll get to that later, but yeah. So that's the BRV braking test done. We don't know how it fared just yet, but uh, let's just say it set the benchmark. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Like more All than right, but ABS kicked in pretty <laughs> early. You could hear yeah, it. Sorry, oh, camera. You didn't, you didn't see. <laughs> All right, so the Stargazer was impressive in the acceleration test, but how well does it stop? That's the other question here. I'm not hopeful. <laughs> Honestly, though, I'm not. Why? But, I mean, compared to the BRV, we got another yeah. there are drum brakes in the back. So. Well, this also has drummies at the back, so. But considering how quickly it went. I'm it it it's better stop. stop as well. <laughs> and I was surprised on the way here. Let's see if we're surprised on the way back. Okay. 60k. So. Alright, so 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 60. This is tough, huh? 61, 60. No! Oh, even oh. shorter! So much. Wow. Ooh. Uh, Significantly. That was painful again. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I had my feet here. I was fine now. <laughs> I was ready this Ooh. time. That's impressive. I'm done stood up for that one. Bravo. Uh, did you notice that? Yeah. I, ass came off the line. I also did the same in the BRV, actually. Yeah, okay. This is impressive. Mm. Very good. Yes, it did beat the BRV. That's like a good two, meter. two yeah, meters. Two meters, yeah, yeah. More. So I guess it was safe to say that um, it wasn't fast. <laughs> but uh, let's see if the braking performance is, uh, makes up for that, yeah? Yeah, we've been surprised every day. Oh, <laughs> so we've, we've been surprised all day with braking performance. So I think given how solid it feels, it might be, slow down a little bit more. Okay. okay. All right, so let's bring this up to 60Ks and just throw out the anchor, shall we? It's gonna take a while, fellas. Fresh. I am floored. Getting there. I am floored. Getting there. It's hit up. Oh, oh my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's better than the BRV. Surprising, yeah. What's happening yeah. to the BRV? <laughs> <laughs> We thought it set a good benchmark. Yeah. So much for disc supremacy. Oh, but, but it's, it's so still further, further away than the uh, Star. Yeah. Star yeah. yeah. The Hyundai is surprising us today. Okay, not fast either, but uh, again, I'm not expecting this to stop as well as the Velos because it's on drummies. What are you guys? Same. You know what? We've been surprised all day. 
I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on to 60. This is gonna take a while, guys. No, we're done. We're done here. Okay, so it's 60, 60, and I'm gonna stand on the brakes. Oops, I'm gonna 60 foot. Oh, oh, still not better than the Stargazer. Nope. Is it tight though? Is it tight? Uh, no, 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 it's a bit better than the Velos. What? Yeah. It's oh. better than the Velos. It's in close second. Yeah. It might be a bit lighter. Yeah. Stuff Could be, yeah. Sorry, BRB. <laughs> you are so funny. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> controversial. Now, one of the reasons you would consider an MPV is definitely its cargo capacity. I mean, what's the point of getting a car like this if it can't fit anything in the back? So for this test, we'll be loading it up with cargo and seeing which one can load the most and is the easiest to load. Hey, Carlo, let's give this a try. This is the BRV. We're gonna load it up. And that's all you can fit, unfortunately, with the seats up. And, and it closed. <laughs> and it closed, but barely. Okay. There's a modicum of space there for a large suitcase. So now, like with all these other MPVs, the back seats do fall down. Thankfully, in the BRV, it's quite simple. Now, the problem is here you have a load lip. So, loading something up takes a little bit of effort. Yeah. So, what you can do is remove this. And this floor can now adjust so you have a relatively flat load floor, which means it's easier to slide things in which makes it simple to load up as much as you want. So definitely a lot better than the, when the seats were up and definitely a lot better when the load floor was made flat. So that's the BRV. All right, next one. So we also have the third row seats up, but we have them in multiple settings. So this one is the most comfortable. It's a bit reclined. This one is a bit upright, so we're going to do it. I guess we can do it with the one with a bit, bit upright. All right, so let's start with the, the soft. One. Yeah, the biggest one. Nah. Oh, dear. No, it's not. It's it. Even with a soft bag. No, okay, so the problem <laughs> here is this is already sticking out and the load floor is already high up. In the BRV, you can lower the floor, but with this one, you don't have much of a choice, so... Wait, let's try closing it with that one. All right. So, so this is with the seat upright. And well, it touches bearish. a little bit. But if anyone's going to be seated back here, you're going to have to tell them to sit upright. If you're going to recline it... <laughs> you're not going to be able to fit anything. That's the best it can do. Maybe this one. Like that. But, that's but it. it's still not going to close because this part is really sticking out. So anyway, let's go for the fold flat. So you so already have a flat floating bed. So let's start with the big ones oh, yeah. first. Let's start with this one too. Yeah. So two big luggage, it's fine. Make it three. It does feel a bit roomier than the BRV's cargo space though. Car yeah, the so there's a, there's a little bit more room compared to the Honda. But um, if you're loading stuff from behind the third row, maybe the Honda does it a little bit better because of the lower floor. But, um, lower floor. but generally speaking, the wider cargo area of the Stargazer does help out a lot here. Alright, time to pass it back to Jason and Carla. So the Velos, as you can see, it's a little bit high for a load floor. And that looks a little sketchy, but I think we can try. It'll, it'll fit. It'll, it'll fit. Squeak. One thing you'll notice is that the opening here compared to the Honda is that it's wider. Right? We said before that the BRV is one of the narrower vehicles in the segment. The opening here, as you can see right away, it's quite circle, it's quite wide. So we'll try it with the seats down. Now, unlike the BRV, where you had that step up here, you have a flat floor, 
which takes away a step that you need to do to load up lar large luggage like these two. So that was easy. Yeah, pretty painless. And with space to spare. Yeah. So yeah, I think the Velos, at least compared to those two, especially when compared to the BRV, definitely has a little bit more space. Uh, so it was a little bit easier to load, a little less steps involved. Yeah. Okay, let's do it how they did it. Let's start with these two. Uh-huh. Ah. And this soft bag. So just like with ah. the Stargazer, with the third row seats reclined farther back, you can't be able to fit this here. Yeah. Uh, it's not, that's not no, 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 no. That, let's not, not, not break a test unit today. But <laughs> if you do have the seats a bit more reclined, uh, upright, it mm. can fit, but at the expense of third row passenger comfort. So. Yep. Anyway, let's fold them down flat. These fold flat as well, so These fold easy. flat. Bit but of an incline, but flat. If you look at it, it does have a higher a higher loading loading space, loading cargo area. Okay, so this is a bit interesting. Why does it look a lot roomier? Look, it has so much space in the middle. It now, feels it's... like it has more space than the Stargazer. But you notice that the car goes a little bit closer together here, in the middle. In the Velos and in the Stargazer, ah, they're a bit further okay. apart. There's not much Tetris involved if you're going to load these things up. But um, if you're going to carry wide stuff, maybe your best choices would be the Toyota and the Hyundai. Hyundai. Yeah. I think it was clear from our experience that yeah. the BRV was a little bit smaller. So between that and the Velos, the Velos was just easier. Yeah. Um, it had more space, a bigger opening. It had a wider mouth. For us, between the two, the Velos takes the cake. Yeah. Considering the size of what these cars are, between the BRV and the Expander, I was expecting more space out of the Expander. Definitely rank this first. Yeah. Followed by the Stargazer. And um, maybe for what they are, we might have to give a tie to the BRV and the Expander. What do you guys think? Looks, I, I sounds good to yeah. us, yes. Yeah. So we have the Velos at first. Yep. Stargazer, Stargazer second. second. And these two, the, so that third. one and this one, tied in third. All right. All right. And on to the next. <laughs> While these MPVs were made for shuttling people around, a big part of the buying process is picking out which one has the best bells and whistles. So let's find out which of these MPVs has the best extra features included, and more importantly, which ones have some missing. Right, it is extra features time, and we start off with the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. And, and I can start off with a list of things that it doesn't have because it doesn't have any advanced driver assist systems. No 360 cam, no autonomous emergency braking, no adaptive cruise control, no blind spot warning, and basically all of the basic stuff you would expect from an advanced driver assist system. Anyway, moving on. But it does have cruise control, which brings Wait, us to- hang on, it does have something else. It has a 100,000 peso price increase over the top spec expander. And what do you get? The same exact same features. Moving on. Okay. What that, what that one does have, and surprisingly, this doesn't, which comes in a third, is cruise control. The Velos surprisingly has all the toys, all the bells and whistles in a rather more advanced MPV. It has lane departure warning. It has forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking. It also has a 360 camera, but it does not have cruise control. You would think that a car with, with a pre-collision system from Toyota Safety Sense would have adaptive cruise, but surprisingly it doesn't. Yeah, sure, it has a lot of features, but the lack of cruise control just puts it in third. Which then brings us to... That brings us to the Hyundai Stargazer, which comes with a lot of bells and whistles. It has lane keep assist, autonomous emergency braking, lane follow assist, recourse traffic alert, and thankfully, cruise control. Next one. The next one is the winner of this category, the Honda BRV, because like the other cars, some of them, it has cruise control, but this cruise control is radar guided. So it follows the car in front and with lane keeping assistance, it can actually drive itself almost. But this one also has a side camera. So when you're signaling to turn right or 
when you're shifting lanes, you can see your blind spot on the right, which I think is quite nice. No? And yes, the infotainment screen could be a little bit better. But other than that, this one takes the cake for extra features. And as you can see, coincidentally, it's also the way we park them. So in fourth is the Expander Cross, third for the Velos, second for the Hyundai Stargazer, and the winner, the Honda BRV. Okay, guys, you join us at the end of part one of this big slash mega test. And we're gonna start off by tallying the points from each test, starting with acceleration with Jason. Okay, acceleration. The Stargazer, which I brought to this test, no big deal, got four points. The Expander Cost got three points. The Veloz got two points. And the BRV, which it got one point. Which was a big surprise. Ah. Stargazer got four points. And the next test was breaking. Another surprise. The Stargazer came in first again, so I got four points. Second was the Expander Cross again with three points. The Veloz in four in third, sorry, with two points, and the BRV with one point. So basically, same results as the acceleration test. Okay, and for cargo capacity, it is four points for the Toyota Veloz, three points for the Hyundai Stargazer, and two points each for the Expander Cross and BRV. Go no walang go do. <laughs> and now, for the extra features, while their test might have been a surprise, the extra features was no surprise at all. The BRV took home maximum points with four. The Stargazer was second with three points. The Velos had two points. And unfortunately, the Expander Cross had one point. All right, so currently, how many points do we have? Stargazer has. 14 points. Coming in at first? Yes. First Coming place. in at second is me with the Velos with 10 points. And meanwhile, I have 9 points for the Expander Cross and... And my poor BRV has 8 points. But I'm hoping that we can claw back in part 2. Alright, so coincidentally, again, we are seated <laughs> in, in our current ranking. So we'll see you next time in part 2 for the next big test.